stand cost limited then this was from the specimen paper 7127-2 i've already done a video going through the process so unraveling the um, question and giving you some ideas as to how it should be structured what sort of things you need to include what calculations you need to do so i'm not going to go through all that again uh, but this video is just to show you what the model answer might actually look like so just a reminder about the question then stand cost limited it was about standard costing and variance analysis they'd already given you some figures for the budget for the actual and a list of variances here um, and the main concern was that the profit for the month at 22,770, the actual profit is far less than the budgeted profit of £90,000 and then the managers of relevant departments had seen those figures and had made some initial comments so the sales manager said that it was due to having to lower the price because of increased competition um, the materials manager said that the um, price variance was a result of negotiating a much better deal with a new supplier. Um, the HR manager responsible for labour um, saying we've followed other companies in the industry and employed workers on zero hour contracts and that's reduced our wage bill. And the MD believes that the managers may be covering for each other and the reasons given are not the real causes of the variances that have been caused internally. So what we are asked to do is assess the significance of the variances on the performance of the business and the managing director's view that the variances are caused internally. Okay, so the way I would start this, and this isn't very looking very much like an essay because uh, the PowerPoint designer has uh, done something fancy with it, but I would start with an introduction. So you wouldn't necessarily need to label that paragraph introduction, but I'd say something, you know, the cost accountant of Stancost Limited has identified several variances that have contributed to a significant reduction in monthly profit of 67,230, that's the difference between the budget and the actual, which is made up as follows. And then what I've done is include a little schedule showing, starting with the budgeted profit, and then adding and subtracting the variances as necessary. So an adverse variance will reduce profit, a favorable variance will increase it. What we have to remember though, is with the sales volume variance, which we've got up here, it's only gonna be the additional contribution that has an effect on profit. So just be careful with the sales volume variances, but all the others are as given there, just slung it all into a table um, to just highlight where the problems are. And obviously that will enable you to see which of these are the most significant. And we can see here that labor efficiency has had the biggest adverse effect on our profits, closely followed by um, the materials usage and then the, uh, the sales price variance. The others here are favorable. The biggest favorable one is the labor rate variance. And what we could start doing is netting these off against each other to find the overall variance um, for sales, for materials and for labor. OK, so that's how I would start it. Then I would take each of the pairs of variances and talk about those. So again, you wouldn't necessarily need to highlight this as sales. You, know, you wouldn't need to label your paragraph. But I've said here that the sales price variance is adverse by £43,000 due to a drop in selling price from the 650 budgeted price to the 600 actual price. The sales manager says this was due to having to lower price due to increased competition, which is a valid reason. However, the price may have been reduced because the quality of the tables was lower than expected. The volume variance was favorable by £39,000, possibly due to the lower price stimulating demand. The volume variance will only increase profit by the contribution per unit multiplied by the additional table sold, which is 12,750. This means that overall, the sales variances have caused a reduction of 30,250 pounds in profit, which is significant. So we have assessed that that is a significant reduction. Then moved on to the materials. So it says the materials price variance was favorable by 30,100 due to a reduction in price from the standard of 550 a meter to the actual amount paid of four pounds 50 a meter. The purchasing manager states this was down to negotiating a much better deal with a new supplier. This is a valid reason for the decrease in price, but it may be that by paying one pound less per meter than the standard, the materials purchased were of a lower quality. And then we've gone on to say, still under the umbrella of materials, the materials usage variance was 47,300 adverse due to using far more material than the standard allowed for. The standard quantity for 860 tables is 21,500 metres, whereas the actual quantity used was 30,100. Probably should say metres after that. Each table used 10 metres more than the standard and a total of 8,600 metres of wood was wasted. This may be due to an incorrectly set standard or it could be due to poor quality materials causing more wastage. The quality of the workforce may also have had an impact on the wastage of materials. 
Overall, the materials variance was £17,200 adverse, which has had a significant negative impact upon profit. So you can see here we're starting to build up some interrelationship between the variances, the fact that it actually could have been poor quality labour that caused the wastage of the materials. Moving on to the next paragraph then, we'll talk about the labour. So the labour rate variance was favourable by 49.020 due to paying the workers £3 per hour less than the standard rate. The HR manager suggests this is due to the introduction of zero-hour contracts for the workers, which is a valid explanation, but it could be that there has been a drop in the market rate, possibly due to a glut of suitably skilled workers. Um, we've then gone on to say that the labour efficiency variance was adverse by 68,800. This was caused by the workers taking four hours more per table than the standard amount of time. In total, 16,340 hours were used to make 860 tables against the standard of 12,900 hours, which is an extra 3,440 hours at the £20 standard rate. Again, this could be due to uh, or down to a poorly set or out of date standard, but could be down to a variety of other reasons, such as the workers being demotivated by the lower pay, workers with lower skills than usual being employed, or it could be that Stan Cost Limited is having trouble attracting and retaining suitably experienced staff due to the zero hour contracts. There could also be a link between poor quality materials and labour efficiency. If faulty tables are scrapped at the end of the production process, then time has been wasted as well as materials. And then overall, uh, the labour variances have reduced profit by 49,780, which is significant. Limitations. So we always need to identify some limitations. And again, you don't need to label your paragraph. I've just done this so that you can pick out the, uh, the relevant bits. Although the MD believes that the variances have been caused internally, the reasons given by the various managers are entirely plausible. There is not enough information to be able to say for sure what the underlying causes are. We need to know more about the quality of materials purchased from the new supplier and the effect of the zero hour contracts upon the morale and productivity of the workforce. We also need to know more about the quality of the finished tables and whether this had an impact on the selling price. Any of the variances could have been caused by an incorrectly set standard, um, so we need to know how accurate and up-to-date the standards are. There are several external factors that could have caused the variances, such as a glut of raw materials leading to a fall in prices, a surplus of labour causing the fall in hourly rate, and increased competition driving the reduction in selling price. So conclusion then, to conclude, there are too many unknowns to make an informed decision about whether the MD is correct and internal factors are to blame or whether the other managers are correct and the variances have been caused by the reasons stated. It is almost certainly a combination of factors, both internal and external, that have led to the variances. OK, so hopefully that's helped give you an idea. I mean, this is not perfect. There's the odd spelling mistake maybe in there and punctuation mistake. Um, but uh, hopefully it's given you an idea of what the essay should look like. So the grade awarded for this one, I would peg this one at around about a level five, somewhere between 21 um, and 25 marks. There was some feedback here about highlighting the significance of the variances, i.e. spelling out perhaps which were the largest and had the biggest impact on profit. But looking at the descriptor here for a level five answer, I think it is a clear and balanced response that presents a coherent and logically reasoned judgment and a conclusion stroke solution that is supported by an astute consideration of a wide range of evidence, including other factors relevant to the wider text. So the writer of this answer has brought in those, um, you know, those extra bits of evidence there, some knowledge about what might have caused some of the variances rather than just sticking with the reasons that have been given. So the final bit here, there is an insightful assessment of the significance and limitations of the evidence used to support the judgment. So, you know, I think each of the variances have been talked about in some detail. There's been a, some calculations done, computation at the start to reconcile the profit, um, the, the actual and the budgeted profit. Um, so overall, I would say that this was a level five response. So I hope that's been helpful to you um, and don't forget to like and subscribe.